from GovTech and welcome to GovTech Level 10. Uh, <laughs> yes, I hope you enjoy the food, the drinks and the wonderful uh, nice place that, you, that we have for uh, our Gov, uh, GovTech. So in fact, I'm actually uh, the product manager of Moments of Life family. So uh, a lot of women are wondering, what is Moments of Life? Okay, just a show of hand. Does anybody heard of Moments of Life before? Uh, oh, wow, okay, okay. Surprisingly, I think um, around half of y'all have actually known Moments of Life. So Moments of Life is actually one of the key national uh, initiative projects that the government has. Okay, what we try to do is that we try to deliver integrated services okay, to citizens and also to provide uh, relevant information uh, based on a citizen's certain uh, life in, in point. So what do I mean by that? Like for example, getting married, having a children, uh, raising a child, uh, getting employed, uh, going into your retirement, and last but not least, moving towards active aging. Okay, so all of this is actually uh, the part moments of uh, of your of of, uh, of is actually part of moments of your life. And what we try to do is that based on a certain moments, right? How can we better provide uh, government initiative and government uh, information to you at that point in time? And some of you might actually overlap different moments. Like you might be having a baby and you are actually entering retirement. So how do we actually better prepare you so that when you interact with the government services, uh, it, you are actually uh, able to uh, use it uh, in a seamless way and we are actually, actually able to uh, provide you with relevant, relevant information. So for this project itself, right? in fact, we use Agile. Okay, just now I hear the question, right? Okay, Agile is going down. Um, it depends, okay? So um, we, are, we are actually using Scrum methodology to actually do our product development. But Moments of Life is actually very new. It's a new product. It's a new initiative. So as a developer, how do we know that is this something that we built that is really added value to the citizen? Is this something that we built that we actually, citizen really appreciate it and use it? Uh, this, is how we, we, this is how we actually think of. Um, I think, is, is it like all developers here? Do we have like designer, UX designer, UX? Ooh, okay, I saw one. Okay, almost up. Okay, okay. So, um, yes, you have a lot of developer here. But what I'm going to actually go on, move on, is to share with you how can we actually use design thinking process or de design thinking activities to help you to actually realize that hey, this is the product that I built, and this is the product that I built that the user will use or the user will provide a good experience for them. So as a developer, not just coding, not just uh, get the de designer to pass you uh, the design or design material specs, okay, it's actually an ongoing conversation between both. And for a developer, it's good for you to understand the process of how designer works. Okay, um, of course I will actually go through the design thinking process and after which I'll pass on to uh, Eeyong, which is our Director of uh, Government Digital Service, which will actually share with us the service blueprint and what is the service blueprint and also how to improve service delivery using the service blueprint. Okay, as I've mentioned, Moments of Life covers the various stages of your life. So, uh, in government itself, we really value how you use uh, government apps. So your experience, okay, or how you use it, whether you like it or not, whether is it usability friendly and etc. is actually one of the key that we value when we actually develop our digital products. So with this, right, um, we actually start off with moments of life family. So for families, what we, we're trying to do is that we, we target to actually ease uh, the use of the government e-services. That means we try to integrate various services from different agencies to actually give you just one platform. So you can assess uh, whatever uh, digital services that's relevant to you just in a single platform. So if, in fact, if you go to uh, Google app, uh, you can go to your uh, app store, okay, and you actually find these moments of life. I'm, I'm just doing promotion now, okay? You, if you find these moments of life family, right, okay? Uh, yeah, please download it, okay? Even if you're not starting your family, but uh, if you're going to start your family, okay, please download it and explore, okay? So what we try to do is that we, we actually integrate uh, different services which I'm going to share later and what we also want to do is to provide you with personalized information so how many of you when you actually open an app and they actually push you a lot of rubbish <laughs> okay what we are trying to do is that we actually want to know you we want to know you personally so how we know you there are a lot of ways to know you <laughs> okay so for example this app itself when you launch it right it actually provides you with some question 
Okay, not 10 or 20 questions, but maybe just 3 to 5 questions. And by these 3 to 5 questions, in fact, we can actually push you a, notif a, a, a couple of information that's relevant to you. And we also will be able to understand that, oh, which stage of life are you in? So we are actually pushing relevant information to you. Okay, what this app is also trying to do is to actually notify you okay, with important tasks. With, uh, okay, for example, you have actually do some application, so it will actually do, uh, notify you that the application is success or not. So this is something that we are, we are trying to do. It's not easy. Why? Because with integrated services, it means that we are not working with just agency, one agency or two agencies. Okay? We are working with multiple agencies. Okay? So what we try to do is that now there's no silo, silo agency that works together. We are actually collaborating with different agencies and what we need to do is to understand their process. So we need to go to their back end and then we need to actually understand oh, how this flow works. How do we integrate services to become the Moments of Life app? How uh, does your data works? How, how, how much data do you need? And how do we actually do data sharing among the agencies? So um, this is a huge task that my boss actually passed it to me. Okay, <laughs> okay so uh, I'm glad that we made it through for our first MVP. And with this, right, in fact, we have been iteratively improving the app and we are also trying to add on more uh, stage uh, moments of life. Okay, so how about uh, sharing with you the uh, project development life cycles that we actually go through. Um, do remember that this is a very, very new product initiative. It's a new, it's, it's, it's really, oh, I don't have that platform yet. I don't have that app yet. So how do we start off with? So the first thing that we are trying to do is to apply a design thinking process where, first of all, who are your customer? Of course, our customer, yola, right? Okay, the citizens, the one who use the app, the ones that needs the app to actually uh, do government transactions. So with this right, we need to actually uh, go and ask them, okay, what are their pain points? What are the uh, uh, government agencies that you need to interact with okay, at that point, in, uh, at, at, the, at the moment in time? And with that right, okay, we also need to, because for us, we have some assumption that how you use the app. So with this right, we need to actually uh, check what uh, if validate our assumptions and also to check if our assumption assumptions is right or wrong. And with this right, um, our designer will be able to do the ideation and try to actually provide the solution. But ideation and provide solution, do we really start to do development? Okay, after uh, design after after exploring the problem, no, we actually go into the prototyping, and it's a quick prototype. So what we try to do is that we develop clickable prototype, and we actually um, uh, get the real citizens to go through, and we test it, and we learn, and if it fails, right, we will actually rebuild uh, rebuild it again, like we actually um, re revise it again. And we test it again, and then of course this process will continue. Okay, no lah, it's not forever. Okay, uh, until that where there's a time whereby the test that means user are satisfied with the user experience and the design concept or the concept of the product. Okay, is valuable to the citizen itself. So with this right, then we move on to the MVP. We start to build what is uh, required to be uh, launched. Okay, at a certain deadline. Okay, anyway. And after that, we will do the interactive uh, software development to improve the product. Okay, so for MVP, we actually launched Moments of Life Family last year, two one eight June. So what we did is that we also, we we continuously did, do, uh, did the development, and then we improved the product, and we are now moving on to the uh, another zone uh, of Moments of Life. Okay, so to further clarify of what are the design thinking activities that we did. In fact, we did a couple of um, engagement activities, like for example, we went to the family and then we do an interview. We do a series of interviews with the family because it's only when the family itself, right, then we understand what is the real problem. So what we try to do is that we, we get them to actually share with us uh, which are the government services that they encounter, what are the information that, that, re that they require during the stage of the life, and based on that, what are their pain points, what are their needs. Okay, so and uh, other than going to them, we also get them to come to GovTech because what we try to do is that we actually uh, conduct a workshop Okay, and we get uh, our personas, like for example, parents with newborn, newborn baby, to actually map out 
what we know as a service journey mapping. So this service journey itself, starting from when your baby is born till your baby actually uh, need to check on primary one registration. So it's a long way, it's a long way. But uh, based on this long way, uh, what are the e-services and what are information that is required or interact with the, with the citizen? So take a look at this. Okay, uh, for those who have already uh, have kids, uh, you might have gone through the painful process okay, with our MOL family. For those who are, uh, are going to get married, okay, good luck because uh, good news for you because you already have the app itself. Okay, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so what you need to do, okay, don't worry, those who are single, you just need to learn, okay, you just need to know what are the services that you need to interact with the government. So, first thing that you need to do, of course, you need to register do your birth registration for your baby and uh, if you don't join the baby bonus scheme you won't get any money lah, okay from the government so you are able to actually do birth registration and join baby bonus and of course uh, you know singaporean also quite uh, kiasu okay so some uh, some of the pa uh, parents actually tell me that while they are pregnant right the first thing that they do ah uh, uh, i see a nodding of heads uh, the first thing that they do is to find a childcare. Okay, because uh, the mother cannot take care, the no maid. Okay, so uh, they need to actually find out where are the nearest childcare center available. And very important thing, is there any vacancy or not? I can I can find a childcare, but I don't have a vacancy. So okay, there's there's no way I can I can actually put the child in. So these are some of the uh, e services that the 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 citizen or the parents will have to go through. And uh, of course, like. Uh, this is also one of the very important one, which is vaccination. And in fact, you know how many vaccinations that the kids will have to do? Oh, I hear the answer. Wow. Six, huh? Okay, six vaccinations that the kids has, has to do. And what you need to do is that you need to book appointment for your kids. And you have two kids, good luck. Okay? And if you are going to uh, overseas, you need to apply passport for the kids. You, and when you reach kindergarten, you need to actually call the center to check for uh, uh, vacancy itself. Okay, why are we highlighting this family weekend activities? Because uh, through the journey and through the interview, right, we find that this is important for a family. Okay, not the rebate, uh, uh, not the benefits, uh, but family weekend activities. This is something that the, the, the user or the participant highlight a lot. So this is something that uh, devalues, which is the bonding. Okay, where to go uh, as a family? Okay, for for an event. So this these are some of the things that we need to take note, and because whatever that we design right needs to cater for them. Okay, so with this, then we get them to tell us, okay, what are the various pain points that uh, you encounter for each of the event itself? So they will actually say, oh, okay, because uh, for vaccination there's no reminder, and I don't know whether I've done my vaccination or not. Okay, another one is, mm, what is my tax rebate? Uh? I, don't, I don't really know what, how, how much can I claim. Uh? And another, okay, which is very frequent uh, uh, pinpoint, is that I have to call every childcare centre to actually ask for vacancy. Okay, so uh, this is not to put those single down. Uh, okay, it is still uh, very fun to have kids. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, it's just that you might need to go through uh, the various processes. Lah, huh? Okay, but what Moments of Life try to do is that they try to actually make sure that um, we provide a better value for you in the sense that, like for example, now you need to actually go through two different online, uh, not online, some, some of them is uh, birth registration is offline. Okay, you need to go through two process or fill out, fill out two forms. Now we try to do is that we streamline the process. So what you can do is that uh, we try to streamline the process in the sense that you just need to actually do one form. And then you just need to submit to various agencies. So what we try to do is that slowly but surely, we try to combine or integrate different services together so that you can just do it once. Okay? And with this, right, uh, for childcare centre, okay, uh, what we also try to do is provide information on the vacancy of the various uh, childcare and kindergarten. And also we show you where are the nearby childcare and uh, uh, kindergarten. So if you have time, you can go back and then you can explore the app. It's there already. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> other than that, okay, vaccination. Yes, some of them actually mentioned to to us that that um, yes, you have moments of life app, but I still need to open another app. Huh? 
to view the vaccination. So this is also part of the movements that we are looking into. So we actually bring this vaccination into our uh, moments of life app as well. So to make it seamless that you need to take care of your child, I know. So how do I, or how do government actually make it such a way that it's convenient for you? So you can just use one pat platform to actually uh, do whatever you need, okay? Uh, and you can spend your time taking care of your child. Okay, so this is something that, that we did. We actually do a map out of the service journey. Uh, and with this, of course, map out is one thing, but how to translate it into something tangible. Okay, so in fact, before we, oh, sorry, this is a clickable demo. Okay, I don't know why the demo word is, is not there. Okay, so we actually translate it into a clickable demo. But even before the clickable demo, what the team did was to do a paper prototype. Okay, you don't jump into a clickable demo because uh, okay, this takes time also. La. Although it's, uh, it's faster than uh, developing the app itself, but what we did is that we actually do a wireframe, we did paper prototype, and we invite the citizen, the user, to come and do a very quick test on the paper prototype. You don't need to be fancy. Okay, just boxes, just boxes, just click, just go. Okay, so the most important thing is to test the concept, test your product. Uh, conceptualization. So once you have done that, and then if you passed the test, you are able. Um, that's what we did, and we actually create a clickable prototype. And what we did is that we bring the prototype out to the citizen. So we went for what? We went for family events. Uh. Okay, that's where we can actually catch the families. So we went for family events. For example, we went for events that was organized by Families for Life, and we actually get them to go through the app and to actually feedback to us, is this what you need? And is there any improvement, any usability, usability issue? So with this, uh, we, we also test it in-house where we have this thing, okay, very cool tools. Uh. This is actually an eye tracker tool. And what it does is that uh, the citizen will actually sit in front of this, uh, this uh, system and they will have to go through a series of uh, tasks. And with this task, right, okay, the facilitator will be able to observe how this citizen actually navigates okay, through the different tasks, including looking at their movement, including looking at their facial expression, including looking at their eyes movement. Because uh, you, you don't realize if you actually use the app and it sucks, and your face and facial expression uh, is really, uh, what is this? So we, we, we actually realise that as well. Uh. So if that happens, then we need to actually go back and we do some uh, tweaking, redesign again. And if it passes, yes, we are going to go through the implementation. Okay, so this is the process of uh, testing. In fact, okay, uh, as a developer, as a designer, there should be a, a, a continuous complication. Okay, as a designer, okay, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to put your hand. Huh? Okay, do you, do you see your, uh, as a developer, sorry, do you see your designer just at the start of the spring, of the spring and the end of the spring? That's all. And you never see your designer anymore. Okay, uh, if you want to put your hand, let me know. Okay, uh, oh, okay, yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, I won't encourage that, okay, because it has to be a dialogue, a, 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 a communication between a designer and developer. My whole team actually sit relatively close together. Okay, it actually occupies uh, part of the, the, the space over there. So if the developer has some uh, issue or question, what they need to do is just work over. Lah. Okay, just work over and then ask question, clarify, and then after that, uh, uh, everything will be done. Um, one of the thing that we did, or the team did, okay, uh, I find really amazing, is, called this, is this thing called desk check. Okay, what is a desk check? Okay, checking on your desk. No, it's when a developer actually finish a story, okay, what, before they actually push it to the branch, they will actually get the BA or the designer to go to the desk, okay, and based on the requirements and the stories that you, 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 you are doing, they actually do a check through, a quick one, okay, to make sure that whatever that this uh, developer did right, okay, is, is actually uh, according to the requirement, according to the usability, according to the design. So once it's done right, then this uh, developer can actually check in the codes, okay, and, uh, and the story is done, okay. And uh, Evolve developer on UX activity, I'm not too sure how many of you uh, are able to involve in the UX activity like testing, but if you are able to do that, please do that, okay? You can actually suggest to your product manager, I want to be involved, or I want to observe 
Okay, so uh, for us, in fact, our eye tracking uh, user usability testing room, there is an observation room beside it. So what I encourage my developer is to go into the observation room and to actually take a look at how the user navigate the task. So in this case, as a, de as a developer, I'll know that, oh, okay, there's some pain point. Okay, so I think with this, right, uh, yeah, this is the team. I'm going to pass on to Eon, and Eon will be able to share with us the design, uh, sorry, service blueprint. Thank you. You can see the kind of energy and stuff like that. So I hide at behind. I had two bottles of Red Bull. Um, I hope I can keep up with that. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, I think for me, um, I just want to build upon a small part from what Jin has shared just now, right? So, um, if let's say you try to recall like whatever Jin has shared, right? Um, typically, when we talk about whether we want to build a product feature or not, a lot of time we jump straight to the feature itself. How many users are using this feature, right? Is this feature something that is an X factor that you know, no other product, no other platform can provide this feature? Am I supposed to build it and stuff like that? Whether I should build feature A, I should build feature B, C, D, E and stuff like that. So that one, nobody call it that way, but let me just give it a name. I call it Think Vertically, right? So if you, if you build upon what Jin has shared just now, it seems to say that actually there, there, there seems to have some value that when, of course, we need to think vertically, but there will be some added value that if you can think horizontally, so that a feature is not just a vertical feature by itself, but it is just one of the element along a journey itself. So, so basically, I think, uh, I don't know how much time we have. Um, uh, don't worry, I only have 40, 40 more slides. So uh, very quickly, I can sum up this. Seriously, 40 more slides. So uh, you might want to call your parents, your wife, and anyway. Anyway, um, okay, let me, let, me, let, me, let me continue this uh, very short uh, presentation. So let, let's, let's, let's build upon that point and think of what we can make out of it. So first of all, I think, uh, okay, just now when we did a, like a profile survey, right? I think most of you are developers, right? So good. So you all can't tell whether I'm talking the right or wrong thing. Okay, anyway. So if let's say you are a designer, specifically if you are a service designer, then definitely you won't be very unfamiliar with this word called service blueprint, right? Okay. Um, so we, we have been using a lot of service blueprint in our context. Try to build this model of how do we think horizontally. And if I use it to drive the kind of product consideration of whether yes or no, whether I want to build a feature or not. How does it affect my decision-making process? So this is a very like traditional model, right? Perhaps we have fine-tuned fine, fine -tuned certain words and stuff like that. But if you want to like study into the literature, you know, just look into the service blueprint, service design, it won't go too far from that. So in a nutshell, right, it's just about, you know, you think about it for, for tens of years, we have talked about talking about journey mapping, right? The user journey itself. We just build upon the depth and talk about like this is the line of interaction where your user will go through this line and interact with you. Then there's also another solid line of visibility, which means that this is so much that the citizen or the user can see and interaction have interaction with the user itself. Whatever that's below is your back-end system, so on and so forth. It's just a very simple model, right? Um, uh, citizen-centric approach to bring together related tasks, blah, blah, blah. I think all these things you can read, right? Okay, before I start, in order to make me sound a bit, no, not a bit, a lot more professional, right? I want to say that uh, in coming October, you will be seeing a new government product. So basically, I think just now, Jin talked about like the uh, 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 young family journey, right? So at the same time, right, uh, no, sorry, October is just an internal trial first, right? We are going to test on, after the birth, right, we want to look at uh, the, the, the death part, right, the cradle to grave, right? We want to talk about when citizen is suffering a loss of family member, what is the process they go through? So just built on this product itself, we, these are the service blueprint that we have accomplished, 14 of them, in order for me to make important product decision. So let's probably take a deeper look in what is it about. So I think you have, you have probably seen this, right? 
Um, but I want to use this to highlight the point about we use service blueprint heavily at this point, which is the part when I'm doing my research, I want to know what is the current state of the digital services. Be it there is no digital product, so citizens have to rely on the physical channel. So for that, I call it a SIS blueprint, right? But if let's say I'm doing an ideation to come up with the to be state, right? Of course, then I'll call it a to be blueprint, right? It, it happened heavily along this line. Um, I just want to introduce some of the basic terminology, right? Uh, the touch point artifacts. So this is, I come to the website, artifacts will be a ticket, right? And the citizen action could be on this website, I want to search for available slots, right? And then I can display the ticket, right? Um, and at the front stage, the service provider, this is normally an officer, right? Maybe from a cinema, from government officer, they would help to register the citizen or they can check the ticket information, so on and so forth. And behind it, there'll be the backstage provider. I basically need to store the user in the database and stuff like that. Just take note that vertically, right, uh, this is the registration stage and this is the attend the event stage. Just some very simple, like, you know, intuitive terminology. So built on this terminology, we want to establish like, hey, um, because you know, if you just want to talk empty about like, you know, uh, I want to build a killer feature, I want to cut down the citizen life and stuff like that, right? It is a little bit abstract, it's in the cloud. So how can I use such a tool to apply certain like, if you play a lot of game, I call it a cheat code, right? For me to know, at least give me some indication of what can I think about it? How can I apply some transformation to it? Okay, first of all, uh, I'll run through very quickly. Uh, by right, this is the ending time already. I still have 30 more slides. Okay, anyway. Um, how do we get the service blueprint plotted? So as you can imagine, right, the first two stage and also the pain point stage, the pain point layer, these are the things that you can just interview your user, your citizens, and it should be allowed you to, to get some of this information, right? On top of it, if you interview the staff themselves, the officers themselves, Right, you should be able to get information this layer and the bottom layer. So if you combine all of them together, this is what you're getting. Then you're getting the full map itself, right? Now, the next question is about now you get the full map, but what do you do with it? Right? Um I I I first need to state this, this objective. So for information, at least in the Singapore government context, we are very serious about this. So we have um, altogether 10 to 12 um, uh, track of works and we apply strictly some of these like uh, service blueprint mapping to make sure that we don't just take care of the front end experience, we have to optimize that, but the back end system also need to be upgraded correspondingly, right? So the whole context is that in the past, especially when you are designing an ecosystem, you are not just designing one touch point. And this citizen has to be served across different touch points. Some might be physical, some might be digital. So we need to do things holistically so that, yeah, here comes the important part. Each of the touch point is journey aware, which means that each of the touch point is just playing a specific role as part of the full journey experience. So, so that is the whole intention and impetus of what we are doing here. So once you have the blueprint done, I think a no-brainer thing is that the first thing, right? We want to remove the pain for all the user. Why do we want to do that, right? Of course, this is the core of user-centric design. We want to remove the pain. And this is the main driver of, because if you develop the next iteration of the system by removing the pain of the current status, definitely you're delivering a better system, right? So that's a no-brainer thing. That's a step number one. So, step number two. Again, based on this visual tool, if there is a way for me to combine the stages, for example, these and these stages combine together. Visually, we are combining the stages, right? But in the actual practical stage, what is happened is that we are streamlining, we are simplifying the journey for the citizens themselves, right? Because now they are less stages or steps for them to go through. Again, this is how a visual tool 
map back to what it really means in a physical world, right? Third one, even better. If let's say now because of certain treatment, right, I can totally remove a stage, right? What does it mean? Even better, because user can skip some steps with the same outcome itself, right? Number four, remove artifacts. So a lot of time, these artifacts refers to things like maybe a physical form or maybe, you know, even a physical ticket itself. Normally, why do we want to do that? Because we want to do this for convenience and efficiency, sometimes also for consistency, right? We want to get rid of the process of I collect information in the paper form, then I need a third party to type it into the system itself. That, of course, will bring across a better outcome. Last but not least, um, it is also about nudging and notification, right? Typically, we use this a lot when we want to bridge the gap between a physical world and a digital world, right? Because you know, whenever the, the, the citizen, you know, uh, leave your digital system and they need to follow up with a physical action, that is always a lot of time. There'll be people forget about the timeline, you know, uh, miss the meeting or, you know, things like that, right? So we need some nudging in place. So, so these are some of the things that after we have run through a few transformation projects, we say that if I put all these five together, right, definitely it is not comprehensive. But at least it gives me some, some sense of what I can do, what I, I can even start with some of the transformative projects. Uh, okay, I need to tell a joke first. So that day I, I come up with some of the designers on this example. So this example is supposed to talk about the pain of like, you know, you want to catch a movie and because there are so many different cinema around, right? Um, so one by one, you go to the cinema. There's no uh, central place and stuff like that. So I was sharing with them that what is the central place we have today to check the movie schedule and stuff like that? Do you know? Google. Google, right? Okay. I still tell them Yahoo movie. <laughs> Then there's, there's, there's no such thing. It, it just proved that how hardworking I am. Anyway, so, <laughs> so this, is just a, this is just a very simple example of like, you know, I have to go to multiple websites to check for the movie timeline and those kind of things, right? And so and so forth. If I use my credit card to pay, I collect the ticket, I buy the food, after that I go in, blah, 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 right? So I just uh, quickly apply. Okay, I'll, I'll go through very quickly, but all these things, I, I actually don't mind to share the slides so you all can take a look later, right? But first, first step I mentioned, right? The no-brainer thing is try to remove the pain point. Always start with the pain point. The pain point is that I need to check multiple websites to find a show time. So how about we can try to combine the stages instead of going through multiple websites, let's combine the one, right? Uh, stage number two, they say that there's a long queue. How about I remove the queue so that they don't have the physical ticket, everything is the barcode, then I don't even need to queue and collect my ticket in the first place, right? So that seems to be logical after I'm looking at this visual model, right? Thirdly, there's also a long queue at the, at the collection, uh, the, the, the snack collection counter. Of course, I, I can't say that, uh, let me eat the snack for you, right? <laughs> I, I can't do that. But at least, if we make an assumption that uh, ordering of food, okay, that day, okay, my, no, nobody know my wife, so it's okay. So um, I... I, I I actually observe ethnographic study right in design context. I observe my wife. Right? True enough, um, to, to, to tell the counter girl what is the food you need and then make the payment, whatever, the process very fast, less than 10 seconds. But my wife took 20 seconds to check, mm, I want this, mm, mm, I want this, mm, no, I want the other one, right? So if, if that experience is correct for all, not just ladies, but also for men, right? then maybe we can move the food selection process upstream, right, through a digital channel. So that would save me some time, right? So from a journey context, this is basically what happened, right? Last but not least, uh, ticket. Remember, just now we say we want to remove the artifacts, remove the ticket itself, right? Ah, that's the time that, because all this is the digital touch point, right? Then this is a physical touch point, which is the time that you really go into the theatre itself and, and catch a movie, right? So there's a digital to physical kind of transition. So how about we introduce a nudging there? So once you put all these things together, then this becomes a to-be state. So if you put them side by side, apparently 
even visually, you can tell that now we have lesser step, now we have cut down the steps required for the citizen, right? And this is probably what you should be considering building, right? Okay, I know I'm very much um, behind time, so let me just share with you the last... Okay, I just want to make one footnote here. If you think that this is just a design problem, right? And if you think that once you already map out all these things, right, my job is 90% done, you are absolutely wrong, right? In fact, a simple exercise like this is also a very heavy engineering problem, right? Because it means that when you think horizontally, when some of your touch points are concurrently powered by so many different back-end systems at the back, so how do you handle the ops tech integration? How do you handle the dev op portion? I think that itself is another whole new topic, right? So um, I back to the example provided by Jin just now. You know, for the moments of life, even at the MVP stage, MVP stage, right? We are talking about an MVP that is powered by 26 API across different other systems. So that is the complexity we are talking about when you are thinking horizontally. So how do you handle the kind of downtime? How do you handle the kind of the SRE, right? When different system has different downtime and stuff like that. Do you do a synchronous resubmission of the cases and all those kind of things? But again, that is another new topic. Okay, last but not least, when with all this thing, data is definitely the king. Um, the remaining task, okay, the good news is that this is my last slides. Okay. Uh, Okay, you can still say good night to your daughter. So, so, so this slide is really about. Okay, so this is one of the product that um, uh, uh, I am a product owner of. So basically, we try to monitor like what are the different features of the product, what take take off, what took off, what really like you know um, after the initial like ramping up period due to the marketing and stuff like that, it eventually die off. So that will also help us to decide what stays and what features are supposed to be removed. Okay, that's all my 40 slides. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have to still uh, uploading a few questions, please do so. Uh, the first one is, uh, when do you transit from lean to agile and when to stop the prototype and start the MVP? I, I and then in the diagram. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, repeat the question again, sorry. Uh, you, you spoke about um, you know how, when you transit from lean to agile mm -hmm. uh, in one of those lines, and um, when do you know uh, when to stop the prototype and start the MVP? Yes. Okay, so um, I'm not sure you remember. There's a slide that I show you on usability testing, like the eye tracker. So what you're trying to do is that you actually get the user to actually go through a series of uh, tasks and make sure that they actually pass the task. If they don't pass the task, right, of course we will actually ask them why and then to get them to actually uh, feedback to us whether it's there's any usability issue or if there's any concept issue. So statistically actually proven that uh, with five to eight, uh, sorry, five to six users, we are able to discover the majority or the main issue of from the usability from the usability. So with this right, in fact, uh, once Okay, they, if you know that there's this task that they all fear, right? Then you need to actually really redesign your game. Because when you launch, you also fear. Okay? So you need to actually go back to your storyboard or go back to your prototype to redesign and then test it again uh, with the user. So with this, right, and when they actually pass the various tasks, uh, it's time to actually start to uh, uh, think of the agile development. So I hope you answer, uh, answer your question. Yeah. Um, the next one is for. Um, the next one is for it's a question for both of you. Um, how do you get the Moments of Life app to coexist with various e services um, of respective government agency and ensure that apps do not cannibalize each other? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so I think uh, we have we have quite a unique approach here. So um, I think just now when you saw like I, I talk about the service journey approach, right? It's not just uh, it's not just a method, right? It's also a way for government to internally reorganize ourselves. So, in order to solve that problem, actually, um, we do form a few like a service journey task force. So, each of the service journey task force will be co-chaired by certain like relevant, uh, the, we call them the business owner. But 
who, whoever that sit in the task force, right, will be all the different agencies that contributes one, one or more digital services. So that's the way we can introduce some kind of a neutral perspective into the whole picture, right? And then the task force itself will engage a centrally kind of commission kind of a, a service designer, right? Which can always uh, try to come from citizen point of view to ensure to ensure that the neutral objective view is there. Uh, moving on to the next question, uh, can you give examples of features or design ideas that were discarded after user testing? Okay, so um, actually there are a couple of them that, that we thought of, but the very important or very uh, prominent one is the joint service that we actually created. So, in fact, uh, even before the uh, ideation and all this thing, right, in fact, the citizen, right, nobody actually complains about the, the they, they need to free up two, two services. Yeah, so, uh, but when we actually go through uh, the design, th sorry, the design thinking process, the ideation, and we actually realize that they can actually combine this form together. And with this, right, we start to combine the birth registration and baby bonus form together. And it's not just combined, we have to redesign the process. And with this, right, a lot of things uh, that we uncovered and we discovered that is not norm to a normal citizen. Like I ask you, do you know what is uh, race barrett? Barrett raised. Race barrett barrett raised. Do you know what is that? Yeah, I don't even know also. Okay. So the user when they actually do the testing, they don't know about that. That means that uh, you uh, for example, uh, you, you are from Singapore and your partner is actually from uh, Australia, for example. Yeah. So they are dual races. So what you want your kid to be? What race you want your kid to be? Okay, so there are a couple of issues that we identified and we realized that, oh, citizen does not understand, okay? And what are the, so we need to actually put in more, like for example, learn more. We need to actually uh, uh, get them to understand how to fill out this, this form together. So in this case, uh, these are some of the uh, things that we actually discovered and we need to redesign to make sure that the citizen, be it Singaporean, be it uh, uh, whoever, uh, we'll be able to understand okay, how does how to actually fill up the, the joint services. So this is something that we discovered. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I tell you a little story. <laughs> quick one, quick one. Yeah, you can still say good night. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, let me first by starting asking a question. How many of you pay tax? Today, if if you go to the my tax portal, I'll tell you a share a little story. So uh, it comes to a stage that uh, our designer need to design just a very simple feature, lock up button. I come into the text portal, how do I lock up? Right. So we made an assumption. We see that we go to the Google image search. You know how Google rank, right? Basically the more popular result will be ranked the first, right? So we type in into the Google image search, lock up button. Then the first result came up. Then we just use it as the lock up button. Thinking that, oh, I made a super smart decision because that one confirmed very popular. Confirm people know that it's a lockup button. Guess what? 70% of the user doesn't know that's a lockup button. So today, if you go back to the my text portal, you know how what is the treatment we do? Down there we just write lockup. <laughs> <laughs> There's no ambiguity there. Uh, we have let's take one more question. Um, so based on the previous one, so how do you differentiate between pain points and basis complaints? Uh, you mean like uh, uh, actually do a complaint in like government services? Sorry. Um, so when you, when you are evaluating what what things to work on, um, you talk about pain points, right? How do you address them? Um, how do you differentiate between pain points and basis complaints? Something which is not needed to be addressed. Sure. Uh, with no offense, whoever potential business uh, business partner here, to me, because we are building citizen facing product, we are building a product for the citizens, right? So to me, business complaints are just unvalidated pain point, right? Uh, business side always have a lot of assumption. What are some of the complaints? What are some of the things that we can do better and stuff like that? Unless. Uh, the feature or the process we are building in is basically to serve the business need. If not, whatever the business complaint to me is just unvalidated um, uh, pain point which needs to be validated. 
that, that is to me, of course. Sorry, to add on, I think if you're talking about baseless complaint, right, uh, a lot of uh, the citizens, okay, you know what's the first thing that they complain? That the government didn't give them enough money. So this is the baseless complaint. Okay, so it's more uh, towards like the policy kind, but what we're trying to do is that based on whatever that we built, uh, based on the usability, based on whatever services, the touch point, okay, what are the pain that they encounter? Can they find this? Can they do that? Can they do this with ease? So uh, I think what we're trying to do is that we actually try to address the pain point uh, of using government digital services. So I hope you will answer, answer the question. Thank you so much. Good night. <laughs>